also cares for her father who has Alzheimer's. What I don't have is the advocacy for my life that you do. My mother had for me, she was like a pit bull. Sorry, should we use that? Sorry, sorry about that. Bold dog. I mean, she just was this, you know, tenacity that she never gave up. She was just like right on the front lines in these doctor's faces about the And I've noticed that you have that same tenacity for the 25 years that I've been rehabilitating. Sometimes act as the facility. Right, cool. I've been given a second chance to live, and um, I just decided that if it was possible, I would um, become an advocate. This is a place where I don't have to justify myself. I don't have to feel like I'm making excuses or asking for privileges. You know, I can talk about my head injury without people say that, saying that I'm trying have people feel sorry for me because my life is not, you know, I can't deny, you know, like being homeless. That's all part of who I am. And in fact, I wouldn't have been as effective as a counselor if I didn't know what it was like to live on the street. But I don't like having a hidden disability. You have to tell everyone and they don't understand. Support groups fill an important role for survivors, and just knowing a community like this exists is important to remind survivors we're not facing our disability alone. But there's only so much a support group can do. We also need real changes in society so we survivors can get the care and support we need after our injuries. Accommodations need to be put in place that would make it easier for us to hold jobs, to help us negotiate demanding and high-stress appointments in public assistance offices, or to deal with overwhelming environments like airports and college campuses. But to begin a serious discussion about the accommodations we need, it seems we as survivors will have to educate society about our needs. I always, I always have problems with memory and organization, so it was a little bit challenging. I did lose my ticket. <laughs> and I did get to the, I, they issued me my boarding pass and then I lost it and then I couldn't remember where it was and then they had to reissue me with another ticket and I had to ring up last night and find out exactly what airline was I on because I couldn't remember and I couldn't remember where the piece of paper was that had my flight information on and I couldn't remember what time it was that I was leaving. When I tell people these are the reason why I don't go back to Jamaica by myself, people disbelieve me and think I just being ignorant. I don't want to go back. I don't want to do certain things. But you see the problem what he have? That's the same type of problem I have to go through because there's times I don't remember. I remember the papers, but I don't remember where to go with it or what to do with it. There is a great strength in the disability community. You know, what we're learning these days, the disability tragedy model's gone out the window. That's, that's it from times 